Welcome back, Dire Wolf here. I just want to do a quick video about a very hot topic right now, immigration. There's some pretty extreme opinions on how to solve the immigration problem we have, not only in America, but globally. I'm going to play a clip for you guys of Jan Michelson, who is a radio personality and a member of the alt-right, and then show you guys his opinions of immigration. And then I'm going to contrast it with the description of the liberal immigration policy as explained by Heather McDonald. Both explanations will be the extremes of either right or left, and then after I show you that, I'll explain to you guys what a little bit of sanity would look like in our immigration policy. First up, Jan Michelson explains how he'd solve America's immigration woes. Tell us how you're going to do it, Jan, and then please tell us how Jan is a man's name. How I would get all of the illegals uh, uh, here in the state of Iowa to leave. And I just put up some signs, and I would just say this. Uh, as of this date, 30 to 60 days from now, anyone who is in the state of Iowa that is not here legally and cannot demonstrate their legal status to the satisfaction of the local and state authorities here in the state of Iowa become property of the state of Iowa. So if you are here without our permission and we've given you two months to, to leave and you're still here, and we find that you're still here after we've given you the deadline to leave, then you become the property of the state of Iowa. And we have a job for you. And we start using, uh, would therefore be owned by the state and become an asset of the state rather than a liability. And we start inventing jobs for them to do. Well, I think everybody would believe it sounds like slavery. Well, what's wrong with slavery? What the fuck do you mean what's wrong with slavery? Slavery is wrong with slavery. Now I know this guy didn't speak for the entirety of the alt-right. Obviously I picked the most extreme example to show on both sides. But holy fucking, what's wrong with this guy? It doesn't justify slavery because someone else committed a crime to come to this country. It doesn't mean you can then commit even worse crime by putting them in chains. Forced labor and slavery is not the solution to our current immigration woes, and it's definitely not the way forward for our culture. Obviously, this far-right example is not a logical or reasoned response to our immigration problem. Now that I've shown you guys the far-right example, now I'm going to have Heather McDonald explain the far-left's response to immigration. This summer, the nation was absorbing a a horrible murder in San Francisco. A young woman, Kate Steinle, was fatally shot by an illegal alien who had been deported five times already for various felonies. And ICE actually wanted to deport him again, but was foiled in doing so uh, by the San Francisco sheriff, who alleged that this murderer uh, should have been let out without being deported a sixth time. The significance of this event and, and the underlying policy of sanctuary cities that led to it. But today I want to examine more closely this very concept of a sanctuary city, of which San Francisco is probably the shining example, uh, because it's emblematic of the ultimate agenda of the illegal alien lobby and how it's eroding the rule of law. Until recently, ICE, our federal immigration authorities, used to be known as INS, but now the acronym is ICE, had a program known as Secure Communities. Secure Communities should be a complete no-brainer. It, it posits that when an illegal alien criminal is booked into a local jail, ICE should be notified of the presence of that illegal alien criminal in order to allow ICE the option of deciding whether to take custody of that illegal alien criminal when he is then released from the local jurisdiction, having served his time or, or maybe even just the prosecutor decides, ah, I don't want to do anything with this. It should be a no-brainer because somebody who's in the country illegally, your garden variety illegal alien, already has no claim for unmolested presence in the country. But if that illegal alien goes on to commit further crimes, 
whether theft, graffiti, drunken driving, assault, at that point, there is simply no ground for claiming that you should be immunized from any possible threat of deportation. And yet, over 300 jurisdictions across the country formally declared that they would have nothing to do with the Secure Communities Program. Now, why is the Secure Communities Program and the opposition to it so significant? Its ultimate goal is to delegitimate deportation entirely as a response to illegal entry. Because the left understands that far more important than the fence is this delegitimation of deportation. Because there's always going to be, even if we build a fence, there's always going to be people who get through. The issue is what happens next. The left is so cocky that it is starting with the hardest case. It is saying even an illegal alien criminal should not be deported. They actually say it's unfair. If you can't deport an illegal alien criminal, a fortiori, you, can, you cannot. There's no moral authority for deporting a garden variety illegal alien. Basically, a complete disregard for the safety of our community. Liberal Democrats value more the big business interest in cheap labor, as well as the guaranteed vote from a underpaid government dependent populace resulted from an influx of underpaid, underskilled workers over the general safety of the populace. This is idiotic and self-destructive. And yes, that is the extreme on the liberal side, but I know not all liberals believe in those policies. Just like I know not all of the alt-right agrees with Jan. I ask everyone watching this video to please avoid these nonsensical extremes. I know it's human nature when you see one side swing so far to the extreme, you are pushed to the other extreme, but it's not good for our public discourse. And it does nothing to further the conversation towards real, sensible solutions. My two cents on the matter is that immigration is not a bad thing. However, it has to be controlled immigration. Open borders with no controls and no vetting is a very bad thing for a country. When you bring in the wrong people, you bring in criminals, you get more crime. When you bring in people that don't like your culture, they're going to seek to subvert your culture. When you bring people in that are adults that have no education, no job skills, they become a burden on your society. However, intellectual and biological diversity is good for a populace. With the one caveat that they must adopt and contribute to the culture. With that in mind, here's what my criteria would be for anyone wanting to come into any other country. The person must be educated or be highly skilled or have a job already lined up. Anyone that doesn't fit that criteria has a high probability of becoming a burden to the nation. Second, they must pass an extremely detailed background check. And I don't mean the Obama era background checks where if they find no information on you, then you're good. No information is bad information. And third and final, you must hold a positive view and be willing to incorporate yourself into the culture of the country you're going into. No fucking religious litmus test, just do you know not to rape women? Do you understand that everyone has rights and that you cannot infringe upon them? Will you respect the laws of this nation? No exception to these three rules, because any exception will endanger our society. I know this doesn't encompass all the immigration issues. However, that's my two cents. Dire Wolf, out. Do yourself a favor, don't Google grape culture.